there's certain individuals in your life that you think about that they're just there, they just make, uh, you, you, these are the kind of people that you want around you when things are bad because they make it half as bad, and when things are good, they make it twice as good. That's Jessica Ordner. So without further ado, I'd like you all to stand up, please, and give a warm, quick brain welcome. New York Times bestselling author, Jessica Ordner. Thank you. Oh, I was all ready to come out, and then Jim started saying nice things, and then I started to well up a little bit. Um, it's, a real, it's a real pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to meet so many of you. Last night, I had dinner with Jim, and uh, we then grabbed our suitcases and we went back to the hotel. And as we're driving here, you know, it's late and we're looking out the windows, and Jim looks at me and goes, I think I need to do some tapping. And so we pulled the car over, we got out, and we did the most epic tap dancing scene from La La Land, and no, I'm just kidding. It's not that kind of tapping. No, so what we did is a, uh, a, a technique called tapping, and I was in the back, so I couldn't see who here has done tapping or have heard of it. Wow, a lot of you. So people who are attracted to tapping, they're in two ha categories, I find. Uh, one category are people who are very open-minded and the, the life hackers, like all of you, and uh, the other group of people are people who are just really desperate and are willing to do something very weird. And when I first learned how to do tapping, I was in that category of just feeling very desperate and open to doing something very weird. Um, the first time I learned tapping, I was actually really sick with a cold, and it was one of those colds that just wasn't going away. It was just days, you know, when it's so bad that you're not even enjoying, like, the friends anymore, like, you know, the, um, just watching TV, like, you, you're just all, wa your eyes are all watery and you're feeling horrible. And so I'm there, and I'm sitting, and I'm feeling sick, and my brother Nick comes over, and he says, hey, I heard that you've been struggling for a really long time. I have this technique, and I'm like, great, where did you learn this? On the internet. I mean, like, so I was like, okay, so he's like, all right, I want you to focus on how you're not feeling well, how you're really struggling, and I want you to start tapping on these acupressure points. So I start to talk about my sinuses. I mean, simply, I was just, I feel horrible, I feel horrible, all of this, this cold, I feel so sick, and I'm really, again, focusing on how I'm feeling, but I'm stimulating these acupressure points. And something amazing happens when you tap. And I'll go into exactly what happens, but one of the first things that tends to happen is that you begin to calm down and so you gain clarity. And in that moment, I looked at him and I said, I don't want to get better. And he was like, and I, I was surprised that I was even saying that. And he said, why don't you want to get better? And at that time, I felt like I was reading all the books, attending all the seminars, taking all the chances, you know, really working very hard and nothing was going my way. And I felt very disappointed and almost betrayed. You know, I thought, come on universe, I thought if I did all these things, things would go my way and I felt so stuck. And my solution to feeling stuck was just to try to panic my way out of it. You know, I was very self-critical, and I thought it made me a very grounded, self-aware person. I was very proud of how hard I was on myself because I thought that that critical voice would lead me to the next level. Can anyone relate to this at all? They have a voice? Yes. Well, and as we know, it doesn't work. Um, so I began to give that voice a voice, right? I, let, I had a moment where I'm tapping on these acupressure points, and I'm talking about my disappointment and my heartache. And instead of feeling like I always have to push my feelings down and criticize myself to take some kind of action, I gave myself the ability to really feel what I was feeling, but now I'm stimulating these acupressure points. And what was incredible was that after just a few minutes of tapping, I took a deep breath in and my sinuses had completely cleared up. And I was amazed. And then I went on with my life because sometimes that happens, right? We learn something that works really well, but we use it during a crisis. 
And then we go on and we do our other things. And then another crisis happened. You know, I was going through a breakup and I felt all this anxiety and I remembered, oh, what was this weird tapping technique? And I started using the tapping and I got incredible results. I felt a real physical difference. And what was so empowering was that I was doing this myself. You know, we have, um, you know, a huge, amazing people who do this. And we also have a lot of veterans who do this, a lot of young veterans who love that when they feel like they're about to go into a panic, that they're able to do something by themselves. And so what's interesting about tapping is that it's something we intuitively know about. How many people, when you're stressed, you go like this? Right? Or you find yourself holding your chest? Or those people who talk with their hand over their mouth? I do this all the time, my mom yells at me, right? So we intuitively know that we have these acupressure points that help us relieve stress. Now what are we doing when we're tapping? It's really the opposite of, of you know, positive thinking. Sometimes we're trying to outthink a problem, but the problem with that is that our whole body is feeling this anxiety. So we're trying to be positive, but our heart is beating and our stomach is tense and we feel that pressure and then we get a headache or we get some back pain. And so even though we're trying to say something positive, it's just not landing because our whole body is in this state of panic. Now the reason that we, we panic, the reason that we have this stress, it's really important to understand that it is not your fault. We are wired for fear and panic. <laughs> But don't worry, we can do something about it. But what you have to understand is that our ancestors, when they had a, you know, when there was a tiger in the bushes and they were scared, they had to go into that fight or flight response. Their amygdala had to fire off and they had to be ready to save their lives, right? But this is the problem. We get a bad phone call and our body goes into that same reaction. Right, we get some bad news and we go into that panic, but instead of being able to run or to fight or do something productive, we just hold in the tension. And then our back begins to hurt. And then we start getting those headaches. Can anyone relate to that? And the other interesting thing about understanding how our body reacts to thoughts is to also look at beliefs. So the thing about beliefs is that most people, when you walk around and you talk about beliefs, for them, it's not a belief, it's the truth. So earlier today, Jim talked about how he was told or he heard someone say that he was the boy with the broken brain. Okay, remember that? So Jim and I really connected because we had very similar experiences. I struggled a lot in school and I stayed back and I also had a speech impediment. And so what happened as a really young age was in the beginning it started with me being taken out of class to get extra help. But what would happen is it was a walk of shame because I would be sitting in my desk and all of a sudden someone would say, Jessica, uh, you know, please come with me. And in front of all of my peers, I had to walk out to get special help, okay? Then I stayed back and I remember I was supposed to be in third grade but I was still in second grade. And all of a sudden, I remember walking down the hall and seeing my whole grade that was now third graders walking past me and that shame that I felt. And then I remember being in the school bathroom and I bumped into my, some of my old classmates and they said, what happened? Why aren't you in third grade? And in my head, I said, I'm, it's because I'm dumb. But I didn't want to say that. I had to hide that. So honest to God, at seven years old, I said it was a mix-up in paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> So what happens when we have these beliefs? Well, first off, we don't know their beliefs. So for me, that was my truth. For Jim, he had a broken brain. That wasn't a belief for him. He didn't know it was a belief. For me, I was stupid. I was dumb. That was my truth. And so I lived my life trying to hide that. Now, what happens when you have a limiting belief like that? All of a sudden, even when you do something well, you feel like a phony, right? And you and you hold yourself back from trying new things because you are so scared someone's gonna find out your horrible secret, which is that you're not smart enough, that you're not good enough. And so instead we play small. And then what happens is when we have moments when we decide, you know what, I wanna do something, I wanna step up in our lives, we find ourselves sabotaging ourselves. There's something to remember. Self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. 
A friend of mine, Brad Yates, said that to me once. Self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. What's happening is we sabotage ourselves because part of our brain feels that it is not safe to take that step forward. It's not safe to be seen. And so in order to protect ourselves, we don't finish that resume, we don't stand on stage, we don't share that idea because we're scared, we have these limiting beliefs and the reason they feel so real is because they literally feel real, right? We feel those things with, with our whole body. So what we're doing with tapping is you're actually getting very clear on what that limiting belief is and sometimes we tap on limiting beliefs, other times you can focus simply on an emotion, on fear, on the anxiety. Sometimes, like me, you start with a headache, and sometimes a few rounds of tapping will help, or sometimes you do a few rounds of tapping and you gain that clarity of what's really behind that headache. There was someone here who came up to me, um, I was in line for the bathroom, I think it was Jacqueline, I wanna hear from her in a moment, but she started to do some tapping, and uh, she was working with a physical therapist, and they cut her sessions short. Um, because of the relief that she was having, and it really shows the connection that we have between our body and our brain. So let's learn how to tap, right? Do we want to learn where the tapping points and how to tap? Let's do this because this is what I love is that when you guys leave today, you will have a tool in your back pocket that you can always use anytime you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed. And what naturally happens, we are talking about limiting beliefs because I think like Jim said, if you have a belief that you're not smart enough, you don't even try the exercises. Right? I mean, did anyone have a little bit of test anxiety when they had to circle the numbers? Right? That's childhood stuff, people. That's from being in school and feeling like we're about to get judged, and suddenly it's like we, we rather not even try to do a test, we'd rather not try to do something new because it creates so much anxiety. So one of the things to start with is just beginning with the most pressing issue. Okay, that's step one with tapping. And the reason this is important is that sometimes we try to like dive right in and we're like, what happened to me when I was four years old? And you know, we, like, we really want to um, go for like the, you know, the big thing. And sometimes the best thing that you can do is start with the one thing that's bothering you in the moment. And that could be what your boss said, what your spouse said, the attention that you're feeling. So the best place to start is that most pressing issue. And you focus on that and you begin by tapping on the side of the hand. So it doesn't matter what side of the hand you tap on. And if you guys all wanna tap, because this way we're all gonna get comfortable with it. So this is one of the points. And you tap here and this is where you start when you are beginning the process. This is called the setup statement. And the setup statement is even though, and you give yourself a moment to say what's wrong even though I am so mad at what they said, even though I am scared to speak on stage, even though I'm scared this won't go well, I accept how I feel. And if anyone knows, if you're tapping, you'll know that people say different things. Sometimes they say, I love and accept myself, or I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I think that's really powerful. But sometimes when you're just starting out, saying I accept myself is incredibly powerful. Now, I'm gonna actually tell you in a second why that's powerful, but let's go to the other points. So the next point is the eyebrow point, and this is right where the hair of your eyebrow begins. So again, you might notice people tend to go like this, but right here, again, doesn't matter what side of the body you tap on. The next point is the side of the eye, and it's right on the bone. Perfect. Then underneath the eye, and again, that's on the bone, And then underneath the nose. Great job, guys. Then the next point is the chin point. So it's really between the lip and your chin, kind of on that crease. The next point is the collarbone point. Now if you feel, you guys have like that U-shaped bone right here, you go down an inch and over an inch, you're gonna feel it. But if you use your whole hand and also tap on your chest, I find that to be easier. And then underneath the arm, now this is about a hand width from your armpit. For women, it's where your bra strap lies. And then the next, the last point is the top of the head. You guys all look like monkeys. This is when, perfect, those are the nine points. Now this point was when my brother was teaching me tapping. He tends to, I think I mentioned this, he does a lot of pranks. So when I was tapping on this point, I was like, are you just seeing how far I'll go? 
Um, <laughs> but that's the last point. And so those are not the nine points that we use in this system. There's a lot of acupressure points, but what's great about those nine points is they're really accessible. Um, any parents in the room, pay attention because kids love this. This is so great for kids, especially when they have trouble articulating how they're feeling, to be able to just let them be in the state that they're in and show them where the tapping is. So when we begin, we start to tap on the side of the hand and you begin by saying, even though I feel all of this anxiety, I accept how I feel. And this is when people are like, uh, do I have to? You know, it's like I don't really, I don't wanna accept something that I'm so tired of. I don't wanna accept something that I want to push through, that I wanna overcome. I don't wanna accept it because I don't wanna just live with it. What happens though is when we, when it comes to our emotions, we're tricky because we get angry and then we get angry at ourselves for being angry. Has anyone had that experience, right? We're like annoyed and now we're annoyed that we're annoyed because we're like, I should have known better. I can't believe that, you know. There's something so powerful by simply saying, hey, this is how I feel and I accept this is how I feel. So you say that three times and then you tap on the rest of the points while simply giving a voice to how you feel. So um, let's kind of move around, like move your body a bit and notice if you have any tension in your body. Maybe it's kind of some tension in your shoulders, uh, maybe a little bit of a headache, but notice any tension. And I want you to rate that tension from a scale from zero to 10. And this is one of the things that we do with tapping. We like to rate, and there's two reasons for this. One is that when you go from a 10 to a seven, even though it's two points difference, you are you're showing yourself that in a matter of minutes, you have the power to make a shift. And when you experience that power, then you have the, the excitement to continue to tap. The other reason is that sometimes I'll work with people and they'll go from like a 10 to a zero and then they'll be like, I, I wasn't really that upset. And you're like, I saw steam coming out of your ears. I know that you were upset, but you're, they're so disassociated with it that they're not able to see the huge difference. So it's great to measure. So you measure your body. And let's do a few tapping rounds right now just on that. And then we're going to do some, we'll maybe bring some people on stage and do some tapping and have some breakthroughs. What do you guys think? Cool? All right. So tapping on the side of the hand. Repeat after me. Even though I have this tension in my body. I accept myself and how, to, and how I feel. Even though I have all this tension in my body, I accept myself and I give myself permission to relax. Even though I have all of this tension in my body and I've lived with it for so long, I accept how I feel and I give myself permission to relax. Now let's tap and we're just gonna give a voice to it. So focusing on it yourself, eyebrow point, this tension in my body. Side of the eye, all this tension in my body. Under the eye, we just had a long lunch. We just had a long lunch. And now I'm here having to learn something. Chin, but I feel all this tension in my body. Collar on all this tension in my body. Under the arm, this tension I've been holding on to. Top of the head, it's safe to notice it now. Eyebrow, and I give myself permission to relax. Side of the eye, all this tension in my body. Under the eye, recognizing how it feels. And giving myself permission. Chin to relax a little bit. Collarbone, all of this tension. Under the arm, any remaining tension. Top of the head, letting it go. Okay, take a deep breath in. Great. That was 60 seconds, two rounds, very simple. Did anyone feel any shift just now in their body? Yes, yes, yeah. You know, it's interesting, yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes you don't even notice that you're walking around like this, you know, until you do something and then you're like, oh. 
So those are just a few rounds of tapping that show you how you can begin to relax your body. But now let's see how we can really use this in real life. Earlier today, Jim asked the audience, uh, he asked you guys if, uh, who here has to public speak for work? And a lot of you guys raised your hand. It was like more than half the room. And then he said, who here gets nervous when they have to public speak? And it's like everybody rose their hand. So what that shows me is that what we're doing is we're muscling through things, right? We have this anxiety, we have this stress, but we have to do it for work and we go on and do it. And this is the thing, I mean, at some point, our body is acting like this, our brain is acting like this because it wants to keep us safe, right? Even our ancestors, you know, I talked about that fight or flight response, but the other thing we also have to acknowledge is that as human beings, we have always relied on each other. Our ancestors were always in tribes, they always hunted together, they gathered together, they supported each other. And so what happens is when we suddenly have to begin to speak out, we become nervous, that we'll somehow be rejected, okay? We do, everyone at some level cares what other people think. We're wired to feel like that because our safety is dependent on it. But now we know that if someone doesn't agree with us, we're not gonna be left in the woods. We're not gonna be all alone. You know, logically we know we have a good support group and, or logically we know that we'll be fine, but our body doesn't. And so when it needs to be seen in public, we begin to shrink, we begin to tighten up because a part of it doesn't feel safe. Whoever has had the experience that they present the best when they care, the, when they kind of let go, right? You get in a state when there is not the same, um, when you are able to relax, things begin to flow. And one of the things that Jim and I were tapping together on last night, because again, like it's, it's normal. This is what's great about tapping is that you can always use it anytime you need it. And so Jim last night was feeling really nervous because he really cares and he really wants to make everyone happy and, and really help people. And so we started tapping by first just focusing on his nervousness. You know, and any doubts he had, we gave those doubts a voice. And then we began to move on to something powerful where we were saying, I'm allowed to care and relax. I'm allowed to care and relax. Because oftentimes when we really care about something, what happens? we feel like we need to stress about it. How many people have had someone in their life who worries as a way of loving, right? And it's exhausting for everybody, right? But it's something that happens. We think if I really want something, then I need to worry, I need to stress, because it's that old response. So what we have to do by stimulating these points and focusing on that fear, we're retraining ourselves. So I wanna ask here if anyone has Anyone is in a position where they have to present often and they notice a certain pattern. Um, now, when it comes to having a struggle with public speaking, like anything, you know, fear of flying, everyone experiences fear of flying differently. Are you, are you scared of taking off? Are you scared of turbulence? Are you scared of landing? You know, what exactly is it? The same thing with fear of public speaking. Is it a tension in your stomach? Are you scared you're not going to remember all of the words? You know, what is that fear? What is that doubt that you run that story? Because a lot of times we begin to talk about public speaking and do you ever notice when you know you have a presentation coming up, you feel like the jitters and the anxiety but you're like by yourself in your house? And you're like, I'm not even in front of people yet. But suddenly just projecting that image, just the thought of having to public speak creates that anxiety. So it's gonna take a little bit of courage in the beginning. This is definitely, these are magical chairs. It's a safe place. We're all friends here. But if I can find some volunteers of people who experience some anxiety and some stress when it comes to public speaking who would like some extra support. Okay, you can come up. Anyone else? Yeah, they're in the back. Yeah, can you can come up. Anyone else? Yeah, gentlemen in the blue. I'll give them a round of applause for being so courageous. All right, come up, you can come up here. Of course, welcome. Let's see. Good, you can sit right here and I'll give you this microphone. So we have Angelita, right? Yes. Hello, I'm Jessica, Hi, what's Jessica. your name? Victor. Victor, we have Victor and Maria. Right, all right, another round of applause for these guys. All right. So first off, it's pretty courageous. They did muscle up here because it is courageous to be standing in front of all of these people. 
So, <laughs> Maria, <laughs> I want to start with you. On a level of zero to 10, when you think about public speaking, or even, is it, this is making you uncomfortable, right? This is a lot. This is a lot. You're very out of your comfort zone. Okay, right now, on a scale from, well, what do you feel? So is it anxiety? Is it fear? I feel it in my heart. You feel it in your heart? Faster. You, okay, and then is there, so put your hand over your heart. And do you feel any, is there any emotion there? Any fear or worry? Can you give it a, a name? Um, what I'm feeling? Yeah. Um, I'm worried about how I look. Okay. Worried about how you look? Okay, so that worry. Great. And uh, what number on a scale of zero to 10, how intense is that? Well, now that I'm focusing on it, it's pretty intense. It's 10. So I would say it's a, t <laughs> it's a 10. It's a 10. Okay, great. Okay, so pass the microphone. Um, remind me of your name again. Victor. 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 Okay, so Victor. Um, do you feel any anxiety right now, or is it just when you think about public speaking? I do. I feel some anxiety. My heart tends to beat a little faster. And does that happen then often when you know that you have to start public speak or do a presentation? Always. Always. It's your heart that yeah. begins to start racing. Yes. Okay. And put your hand on your heart. What emotion, when you think about that beating heart, is it fear, anxiety, worry, something, Charlie else, what comes up? Uh, probably anxiety the most. Anxiety. Okay, and rate that anxiety from zero to 10? Right now, 10. 10, okay, <laughs> all right, and you can pass the mic. Okay, so how about you, how are you feeling? Is, is, it the, is it right now, do you feel some anxiety, or is it the thought of public speaking? Both. Both, okay. Okay, so right now, what are you feeling and where are you feeling it? My, my whole body is shaking and my heart is pounding. Okay, and does that happen often when you have to be in front of people, when you know you have to do some kind of presentation? Very, yes. Very every, often? Every time. Every time, okay. And before, before you even go on stage, do you begin to have that reaction? I do. Okay, and so when you think about, when you just are feeling into your body that's shaking, what emotion, if you had to give it a name, with that. Fear. Fear. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so one of the amazing, first, another round of applause for these brave people. <laughs> one of the amazing things about tapping, um, remember how Jim earlier was saying that genius is recognizing patterns? And what you guys are going to start realizing now when you begin to start tapping more and when you tap along with these three amazing people is you're going to see the patterns. You're going to begin to realize how we're not all that different, right? Who can relate to their experience and how they're feeling, right? Okay. So if you feel, if you're thinking about public speaking, I want you to really imagine it and I want you to rate it yourself. So I want you to rate how anxious you feel, or is it fear, is it worry, what is it? Where is it in your body? It tends to manifest itself in a specific place. So notice that, and if you write it down, if you can, or just keep that in mind. Now, as we tap now, I want everyone to be tapping with us. We're all gonna be tapping together and checking in with each other, because what you'll find with these patterns is even though you might be tapping on someone else's experience, it's not so different than your own, and you can experience relief as well. Got it? We ready? Okay, wonderful. So, Maria, the 10. So let's just do some tapping together. Okay. Even though I have all this worry in my heart, I accept myself and how I feel. Even though I've been carrying this worry in my heart, I accept myself and how I feel. Even though this worry is so heavy, I accept myself and I give myself permission to relax. Eyebrow, all this worry in my heart. Side of the eye, all this worry in my heart. Under the eye, I'm scared of what they'll think. Under the nose, I scared, I'm scared of what they'll do. Chin, I'm scared of how everyone will perceive me. Collarbone, I'm worried about how I'll do. Under the arm, I'm scared I'll disappoint someone. And I'm really scared I'll disappoint myself. 
Because when I disappoint myself, side of the eye, I am really mean. Is that true, Maria? Really mean? Are you mean to yourself when you feel like you disappointed someone else? Yeah. Under the eye, all of this worry. Under the nose that it won't be good enough. Chin, all of this worry around how I look. Collarbone, this worry that I'll be rejected. Under the arm, this worry in my heart. Top of the head, I've been holding on to it for so long. Eyebrow, and it's really heavy. Side of the eye. This worry in my heart. Okay, I just want you to take a deep breath here. Great, Maria, if you can pass her the mic. So Maria, as we were doing that tapping, all we were doing there was what you said, the basics, just this worry in your heart. Did anything else come up? Did you feel a difference or did any other thoughts come up? Uh, a lot of thoughts came up as well. Sorry? A lot of thoughts came up as well. Yeah. As I was thinking, I, I was scanning my body for how I felt and I, I realized it was almost, it was hard to breathe at one point. Yeah, and when it comes to those thoughts, can you share, is there a certain thought that really stands out? Um, about what I'm scared? <laughs> Great, let's talk about an audience. Of, <laughs> yeah, in front of all these uh, people. Sure. Um, Only the first thought that came to mind is about being fat. Mm -hmm. That's how I perceive myself. Mm -hmm. And the other part is like, oh, you know, I could have brushed my hair or worn some makeup <laughs> before mm -hmm. coming to stay. Um, but really it was all these people, you know, they were going through their process, and it was hard for me to come within. It, it was because like, you were so focused on like, yeah. oh, well, what are, what, they what are they thinking? Yes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, let's pass the mic. I want to check in with you guys just from that tapping, if you feel any difference, but if you put your hand over your heart, have, do, you feel, have, do you feel any shift? Did anything else come up? I feel less anxious. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel like my heart's beating as fast either. So it was a 10 before. What number would you give it now? Um, probably about a 6. Okay. Five. Six and a half. Okay, wonderful. And you can pass it in the microphone down. How is that for you? My body stopped to shaking. That's great. And how do you feel now? So before you were measuring it and it was a 10, what number would you give it now, if anything? A 3, maybe a 2. A th Three, really, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Wonderful, so it's interesting, like I feel like sometimes, I have not met any of you guys until this moment, which is a real pleasure. Um, and I feel like a lot of times these things happen for a reason, and Maria, I'm very grateful that you're up here, because for a very long time, I, the book that I wrote was on tapping, but it's actually called The Tapping Solution for Weight Loss and Body Confidence. And the reason that I, wrote this book and spent so many years studying this topic was because of my personal struggle. I was told when I was little that I was fat and no one was gonna listen to what I had to say until I lost weight. I also was told that I'd be cute if I lost weight. And so what happened was suddenly it became this massive obsession, but because I was so anxious around it, a part of me also rebelled because I was so angry that I had to be different in order to be accepted. So one side you want to be accepted and the other side you want to rebel. Can people relate to this idea? Like you rebel, you almost self-sabotage yourself because you're rebelling against the pressure. And it was deeper than that. You know, I put so much stress and value around how I looked and I really thought that I could hate myself skinny. I thought that if I could just be mean to myself enough that one day something will click and I'd be able to get on a diet and I would, it would be able to stick. And you remember earlier today when Dave was talking about how he was traveling the world and how he um, was meditating and then he started to experiment and he started to experiment with butter. And he's like, I, I can't tell you, I don't have the scientific evidence, but I was getting the results with grass-fed butter and not the regular butter. Do you guys remember that story? Okay, what, the reason that is so interesting is that when you are in that mindful state, when you are allowing yourself to really relax, you notice those things. You're able to tap into your body and you begin to create a relationship with your body and you realize what works for you. The thing about we've learned with Dave today and even with Jim and what we're gonna learn with Michael tomorrow 
is that we are so unique and individual when it comes to our wellness and our health. But the problem is we're, we have this culture that keeps telling us that there's gonna be this one fix. And so what we do is we kind of jump into one diet or another. We feel like we're supposed to feel anxious until something changes. Or I will feel confident in my body once it looks a certain way. And what I began to find is that when I started to relieve the stress, when I began to just little by little let go of the pressure I felt from the outside world, I was able to build a relationship with myself where I was able to gain clarity around what worked for me. This is a thing, it is so easy to take care of things that we value. When you love a car, you know those people who love their car, they're always cleaning it. You're like, it's not even dirty, and they're there with the rag. They love cleaning it, they love taking care of it because they love that car. It's easy to take care of something that we value and we love. It's really hard to spend the time and energy to take, some, take care of something that we hate, that we think is betraying us, that we think is not enough. And so that's why for so many, including myself, it was very hard for me to find solutions that worked because I was in the stress of, of either focusing on it from this place of hate and pain or deciding, you know what, screw it, I'm never enough. It's never, what's the worst, what's, why is it worth trying when I try so hard and it never works? Has anyone had that conversation with themselves? What's the point of trying when I try my hardest and it's not enough? And so you rather go the other direction and quit. And so what really helped me with tapping was when I just started to like peel off the layers of the worry and the pain. When I allowed myself to begin to see my value before anything changed. When I began to realize that even if nothing changed, like that setup statement, even though I feel this way, I love and accept myself. When I could get there first, the results didn't matter, but the results came, right? But the results didn't matter. And so it could, I could take time, I could experiment with different things, I could do different seminars, I could find what works for me, and we're always experimenting. This is the thing about the human body, we're in it for the rest of our lives. But the problem is we come from a place that says you just have to figure it out and once you figure it out, you're gonna be done. Has anyone been in that mentality like they're just waiting for that next thing so like they can just, you know, finally be in the perfect body and live happily ever after? A lot of us have been chasing that dream. And so when we begin to realize that we are valuable, that we are allowed to relax before anything changes, that's freedom. And that's when we have the real shifts. So I want to, what's coming up for you? What's, what's relating to you, Maria? First of all, another round of applause for Maria, who's being so incredibly brave. Thank you. Um, to start with, I want to say thank you. I was thinking, wow, this has been my number one focus, and I, I came up here obviously not, you know, I was like, I'm just not gonna go there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's really touching me, what you say, because um, it is true, I've been trying to fix it as opposed to love where I am. Yeah. And um, I, I think what touched me the most was when you said, oh, even if nothing changes, like, I'm still loving myself. And I was like, wow, that's something I don't do very well. Yeah. That's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Another round of applause for Maria. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So Maria, going back to that, the tension that you felt, that heart rate, did, have you felt any shift with that specifically? Being up here, the public speaking. <laughs> Oh, you mean if it's an 11 now? Yeah, is it an 11? <laughs> Has it gone up? Yes? Okay, that's wonderful. So what tends to happen with tapping is when something goes up, it's because you're finally getting to the root of what's happening, right? So sometimes like, we feel like we have a backache and we start to focus on it and then we begin to realize that we're actually angry and that spikes up. Does that make sense? When something really spikes up when we're tapping, it's because we landed on the thing that we've been kind of going around and not landing. We've been working on everything else, but now we're really focusing on what is creating that, that most pressing issue. So that's great. Now when you say it's gone up, it's that the, the beating, the quick beating heart? Um, well, um Right now, it's not only my heart, I also feel it in my throat, I feel it in my jaw, like I shake a little bit. Yeah, and that's the other thing to pay attention to as well when you tap. It's called chasing the pain. And sometimes what happens is you'll have a pain and it'll move to a different part. And I don't know why, I've st we still haven't figured out exactly why this happens, but it's really common. Now, 
that's with pain. What Maria's experiencing is it started in her chest and now it's coming to our throat. And so what you wanna do is then begin to incorporate your tapping with what's coming up and look at your body as a metaphor. What are you having trouble saying, right? What do you need to say to yourself? What do you need to say to your world? Really notice where you're feeling things in your body and make those connections because our body does work like one big metaphor when it comes to our emotions. So Maria, does any of that relate to you when you think about that, this, that pressure in your throat? Sure. Yeah. It's kind of interesting because I was like, um, as you were saying this, I, I was asking, well, what am I not expressing, right? And, and I think, well, to start with, I'm expressing a lot of fear, which is sort of, I'm even more terrified that I'm actually expressing the fear. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, it's almost like there's more to be expressed. Like, I, I'm not sure how to explain that. It feels that... I'm, like I'm it's all just, coming out now, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. But yeah. At, at the same time, you, it, it does feel that, you know, it, it's kind of... I'm even getting a headache. Like, it, it's almost like we've gone to the root, and now it's just, like, blowing up everywhere. But I, I'm grateful that we're there. It's kind of better that yes. it's out in the open than hiding. Do you guys notice, though, how, like, articulate, articulate Maria is right now? Is she explaining those things? Has anyone else noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is what happened. This is one of the reasons that sometimes, I, I love Maria, I love that you just said, I am so happy that now it's all coming up. Right, what a beautiful thing, right? Because so many of us, we feel, we're so scared to feel because we're scared it'll never end. And that's why we need a technique. That's why we need to be able to start to tap when we feel like, this is a lot. Now, when you begin to feel like this is a lot, the best thing that you can do is we have judgment around it being a lot. We have judgment around like, oh, that can of worms. I gotta fix everything now, right? And the struggle with having that mentality as well as someone earlier was like, you know, I, I know there's something with my, wrong with my brain. I've been trying to fix it. If you're always trying to fix yourself, you're always gonna find something that's wrong, always. And this is why I love this technique, because a lot of it is around accepting where you are. And you saw Maria have a shift, and you shared that it was when you said, even if my body never changes, that idea of can I accept myself? And that is ultimate freedom. That's when we can move and navigate through life, and life just opens up. So there's sometimes this fear of like, oh, this is a lot. So do you feel any of this anxiety? Like, oh, I opened up a can of worms. Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> then you start there, okay? So let's all tap together on the side of the hand. And Maria, real quick, that can of worms, that feeling like, oh, now it's all coming out. Is, there, is it fear, is it, or maybe it's anticipation, or it's overwhelm? All of the above. Which one sticks out? Sorry. Um, what tapping. it feels like is, uh, it, it's almost like uh, um, I'm, I'm feeling nauseous. It's like, um, it, it's really that I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. that, that's really keeps coming up. And, you know. Um, can anyone relate to this experience? It, I know I can. It's almost as if. Um, I, I definitely feel that I'm overwhelmed, but I also feel that uh, it's really hard to accept where I am at. Mm, okay, let's start to some tapping. Even though it's so hard to accept where I am. Hard to accept where I, am. I accept that it's hard. And I'm not really good at it yet. Even though it's really hard to accept where I am. And I like to do things perfectly. I accept that this is hard. Even though it's hard for me to accept that this is hard. I accept that. Eyebrow point, this is hard. Side of the eye, it's hard to accept myself. Under the eye, and I wanna do everything perfectly. Under the nose, I read all the books. Chin, I attend all the courses. 
Calibrate. And when someone says I should accept myself, I want to do it all at once. I want to do it perfectly. All of this pressure. This pressure to accept myself. All these emotions that are coming up. Under the nose. This new journey that I've started. All these things that I'm realizing. Collarbone. I honor how brave I am. Under the arm, and I trust my process. Top of the head, I honor how brave I am. And I don't have to do it all at once. I don't have to accept myself perfectly. And that's okay. Under the nose, where I am, chin is okay. Collarbone, it doesn't have to be perfect for me to feel better. Top of the head, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. And I'm moving at my own pace. Okay, take a deep breath in. Shake your hands out a little bit. Let's move that energy. Ah, Maria, how was that for you? That was incredible. I, as we were saying that, because it was the truth, like as we were tapping, I could feel like literally cold running cold? through my hand. Cold? Like a cooling sensation? Yeah. That's amazing. It, it was just like, wow, it was so intense. Because before I could see, I could feel tension, I could feel pain. And so I was like, wow, you know, it's just moving. And it's yeah. cold and it's moving. And what about now with your throat? Do you feel like that's relaxed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing. Give her a round of applause. That's so great. Uh, wonderful. So let's check in with Victor. So I know that we went on, on an adventure just then that was not planned, but who found that really valuable? Yeah. Um, how, is, how do you feel, Victor, when you're that heart? I'm not perfect, but I feel great. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's so great. So, no, you feel good? I feel great. Oh, really that's good. amazing. I, I feel, feel much more uh, calm, and uh, I thought that was very helpful. Wonderful. Thank you, Victor. And Angelina, how was that for you? I feel, I feel great. Yes. I love and accept myself. Yeah. And what about your body? It was shaking before? It was shaking here. before. Right now, it's, I can do a handstand right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Wonderful. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And, um, and I'll mention everyone, but Maria, I want to gift you, I have a, a seven-week program for weight loss and body confidence that really is about valuing ourselves and this journey. So I would love to give it to you as a gift for your courage. <laughs> of course, of course. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Great. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. I think one of the, um, thank you. I think one of the, something that we have to remember in this environment as we learn all of these things is to recognize the amount of pressure we put on ourselves to do things perfectly. Like, who is like, I have to change all my LED lights, you know? <laughs> I gotta go home and do everything at once. And then all of a sudden, all this information that we're learning just becomes completely overwhelming. We get into fear because we're listing all the things that we're not doing right. And when we get into that state of fear, we go into that fight or flight response. We don't have that extra blood, you know, blood goes to our extremities to fight or to flee, and we're dumb. You know, and we find that we have all of these ideas, but we're not actually moving on any of them because we feel completely overwhelmed with anxiety. And it's very important for, especially this community, we're all really ambitious, we want more, and it's exciting. But the pressure that we put on ourselves is so incredibly debilitating. And, you know, I'm, I'm working on a book now about getting unstuck and finding your flow. And when I mean flow, I mean flowing through disappointment, flowing through anger, flowing through joy. You know, be, being able to allow ourselves to be brilliantly human, right? And the challenge that we're having is that, especially when we desire more, anytime we have a struggle or a negative 
experience, we freeze up and we think, oh, I must be doing something wrong. You know, I have um, a podcast, everyone has a podcast, but I have a podcast too, um, on the stage called Adventures in Happiness. And one of my favorite questions at the end of that show is, what is something that was horrible at the time that ended up becoming the biggest blessing? And every single time, something horrible ended up being like the catalyst that changed their life. And I think what we have to learn is that when we have a challenge in our life, it's not a limitation, it's an opportunity. And the only way that we can begin to see those opportunities is when we begin to deal with the beliefs and the anxieties that we have so we can think clearly. Because when we are relaxed, we are resourceful, we are creative. You know, when Dave talks about the brilliant things that he discovered and the patterns that he recognized, it was because he was doing all that meditation and finding himself feeling really calm. And I love meditation. One of the challenges, though, is that when you're really having a hard time, and so who sometimes just, it's like late at night and you can't stop thinking, right? And you know you should meditate and you're trying to clear your thoughts, but you're just like, ugh, it's hard. Well, when it's hard, it's time to start doing something with our body. And even if we simply begin to tap on these acupressure points exactly where we are, even without saying anything, we're going to be, we're going to experience a shift. I spoke to someone at lunch who, who shared that um, a therapist taught them to just tap on this point whenever they felt anxious. And that's another great tip. You know, this is a great um, technique, but maybe if you're riding the subway or, you know, in an office, you're not going to be like, you know, doing the monkey point. But you can find a point that feels good for you and use it, uh, you know, right before speaking, you know, anytime in public. If not, you know, do you have the whole experience. Just give yourself a few minutes. Um, I want to take some questions. Actually, let me, like, mention something because it's perfect timing. You know, Jim mentioned that he invited me kind of last minute, and then I, I was like, yeah, I'm getting on a plane. Um, it's a crazy time, but it's so perfect because on the 27th, which I think is this, this Monday, we have this online event called the Tapping World Summit. This is the ninth year. I've been doing this for nine years, this event. And it's all online and it's completely free. And when I say it's free, I mean it. Um, completely free. The way that it works is that every day you get to hear from two leading experts who use tapping. We have different doctors, different psychologists, world-renowned experts. And what's great about this technique is we're dealing with anxiety. And so we have anxiety around work. We have anxiety around relationships. We have anxiety around money. And so once a year, I, we begin to kind of reach out to our audience to see, you know, what are some of the main struggles that people are having, and we bring in the best experts to address that. So that is for 10 days. I recommend that you guys check it out. It's the tapping, so, or it's, if you go to Jim Quick, which one, what is it? Quicklearning.com forward slash tapping. Um, but the other thing that I will mention as well is that right now, the way you know, we do this event is that you, we only make money if you like the program and you buy it. But there's definitely value in owning it because we have an incredible amount of bonuses. One of the things that I love doing is recording tapping meditations on specific challenges. So tapping meditation for, um, you know, trouble going to sleep or the fear of public speaking. And so when you buy that program, you're able to get those tapping meditations to use whenever you want. Um, we're also going to do a small group of Facebook Live where we're going to get to work with people who purchased the program before the event started um, to really give people extra support with Facebook Live. So we're going to, I want to do some Q&As. I want to hear from some of you. But I'll mention that, and in the back, um, when this is over, you can connect with me. I can answer any questions. It's something to definitely check out and something to share with your family. I mean, who here knows someone who can really benefit from a stress relief technique? Yeah, for sure. So I want to I wanna answer some questions, but I also want to hear from, I think her name is Jacqueline, who stopped me in the bathroom. <laughs> Was it ja who stopped me in the line in the bathroom? Ja is it Jacqueline? Oh, I got the name right. I'm learning from Jim. So if we can get Jacqueline a microphone, I can give her this one. Or, do, you have a mi do you want to pass her the microphone, sir? Or you can do it. Thank you. Okay, so this is such a cool story because Jacqueline didn't know who I was until Jim told her that I was coming to speak. And so where are you, there you are. Yeah, I know. So can you, um, can you share the story that you shared with me? 
I can. Thank I was you. speaking with Joni and uh, telling her I was having health challenges. Uh, on a Monday, Thursday, she sent me your uh, quick, I mean the... Uh, tapping World Summit? Yeah. Yeah. And so I started tapping and my back was really hurting, but then I had still had the stress. Then you sent out a different uh, email with the uh, stress. With videos, I did. I filmed three yeah. videos, um, and one of them was doing a tapping meditation on stress relief. And so, from my shoulders to my uh, gluteus maximus was all sh just tight, tight, and and I couldn't move. I was telling my mother a few days prior to that that you know I would she would be walking and I would do like that to see if she's still there because she's 90, right? And she's like, I'm coming, you know. <laughs> and then I had to stop, like and you still there or actually hold on to the buggy with her because she was faster than me uh, all of a sudden. So now, you know, and I, I, I tapped, I did four, I did your stress twice. <laughs> I, did, I just kept going because it was, I, my numbers were lowering. So that was uh, the Thursday night. Friday morning I had physical therapy. And the therapist, you know, they measure everything. It's not like she's just looking at me. You know, she measures everything, my progress, how I'm doing and everything. And, uh, and, and I was showing her, I was like, I watched this video and she was like, um, can I get that information? <laughs> but promise me you'll finish the physical therapy. So then when I went, so I finished another week and then yesterday they released me. Wow. And uh, told me that, you know, she said, I'll tell you what, um, I give you two weeks. Uh, if everything is still the same, we're just gonna leave it the way it is, you know, because you're doing okay. But she's, you know, looking at your stuff too. So now that's amazing. You know, yeah, and 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 this is, um, I didn't even think I could be healed. So I, every time I would go to physical therapy, I constantly was asking them. And, and I'm a faithful person, and, and I lost my faith because my back was hurting so bad, and my, my actually my legs went out. I didn't know it was my back. Found out it was my back. And so it was just uh, a mental challenge. So then when, you know, I was going through everything, but when I started tapping, I mean, I'm no physical therapy. I walked five blocks this morning. That is something that she didn't want me to do. I, I, I walked five blocks coming in and uh, I took my time. I'm, I'm still, I'm doing things right though. I'm not yeah. gonna, yeah. you know, you push things. And I still feel a little bit, but I, I can see my mother. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you, Jacqueline, for sharing that. That's so great. And you know, Jacqueline, you are a wise woman because I love how she said that she's feeling this difference, but like I'm not gonna, like I'm still gonna do the other things. And this is what I really love about tapping is that you can incorporate it with whatever else you're doing. And when you are able to release stress, you're also able to gain greater awareness as to what is actually working. You know, what can benefit you the most, especially nowadays when we're learning so much information and when we're having trouble figuring out exactly what we should do or what the next step is, tapping really helps you gain that clarity. So we have a few minutes now. I'd love to um, answer some questions or if you guys have any stories that you wanna share about your tapping experience, I'd love to hear it. So do you have any questions or, there's someone in the back. Yeah, yeah, of course. When you asked me to do it in the raw showroom, I was oh, to very, share? <laughs> very nervous. I, but after we did that, I was okay. Yeah. I just want you to know. That's awesome, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So if we can bring the microphone, I think back there, we had a hand up. My question is, do you feel that tapping is more effective when your eyes are closed? That's a great question. I've tried both and I feel like uh, it's working better when my eyes are closed. Yes. Uh, I find that often it does work a bit better when your eyes are closed, but you have to look at the reason behind it. When we have our eyes closed, we tend to be able to connect with ourselves better. Right, and we also gain greater awareness as to how we're feeling, which is why we're not meditating. Like, you know, we have our eyes closed. So closing your eyes is a really powerful way to help connect with your body. So it definitely can be, yeah. it can be helpful. Yeah. And the thing about tapping is too, is just seeing like, well, what works best for you? If you find that it's better to close your eyes, absolutely do it, but it makes complete sense that, it, that it's better. Yeah, one more quick question. If you have a loved one who you know this would benefit, but they're not receptive to it, Yes. How do you introduce that to them, or how would you, is there a way that you can actually like tap
cap other people. I know that sounds kind of weird, but yeah. like, can you like be like, I know you want to do this, but I got you. <laughs> no, I do not recommend just like can going. You, for I mean, yeah, like going up on top of their <laughs> Right, right. Um, I mean, does it still work or is it something that your body itself is going to be more receptive versus me going up to someone and tapping them? You don't, what I found is you don't have to believe it works for it to work. Okay, that's what I mean. So, and that's what I love about it is that I have said to people, but the person has to be willing to try it, you know, but they don't have to believe it's going to work in order for it to work. So that's really great. But I also want to address the other part of your question because I think it's really difficult when we are seeing someone that we love struggle. And Jim mentioned before, Jim asked the audience earlier, who here feels like there's someone in their life they could teach something uh, to? And a lot of times we come here because we have the willingness to support the people around us. And it's hard when someone's not receptive and they're struggling. So there's a few recommendations I have. One is to do, it your, to do the tapping yourself. Simply because when people begin to see that you are feeling more relaxed and you talk about your experience, they're more open to trying it. And um, the other thing is to focus on your reaction to seeing someone else suffer. And this is a hard one, but sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to fix someone else or feeling like we have to fix someone else and we don't realize that they might be on their own spiritual journey. I mean, have you had a moment in your life when you were really struggling and you look back and you're like, you know what, that period was hard, but it was what I needed. It led me to something amazing. Sometimes it's hard to have that faith because it's heartbreaking to see a family, a family member suffer, someone you love suffer, but it's an important thing to address yourself, right? The anxiety you feel, the heartbreak, the disappointment you feel that they're not getting it, right? When you can give your voice to that and begin to let it go, you will find that you're able to even be a better support to them. And they rise up because you begin to have faith in their ability and faith in their journey and they rise up with that. I find that happens a lot. Um, I have a tapping meditation. I'm gonna, I'll find it and I'll like put it in a, in a link on Facebook for surrogate tapping, which is, this is how I get people in because people think surrogate tapping, it's you tap on yourself and it helps someone else and it does. But it's really about getting to that place where you realize that you cannot give what you don't have. You can't give peace if you're not feeling peace. You can't give love if you're not feeling love. So when you're able to get yourself in that state first and also have faith in their journey, I find that miracles happen. So I actually created a tapping meditation around that. Um, so we'll put that in a link. And then the last thing with friends and family, I mean, honestly, guys, like the, the Tapping World Summit is one of the best things to share because for the 10 days, it is absolutely free. I mean, it's, and it's called a Tapping World Summit because people are using it all over the world. We have half a million people. I mean, one of my favorite stories is a boy, a boy in China who was, you know, under the, the one child policy. So he was an only child. His parents, you know, he had his parents and he had his grandparents and he had exams. Can you imagine the amount of pressure that a kid must feel from their parents and their grandparents that they're the only child? They listened to the Tapping World Summit for free, had the experience, and he said that it made a massive difference with his exams. His anxiety went away, he did a great job, and he, you know, he completely experienced the whole thing for free. So it's a very unique opportunity that I'm speaking to you guys right now because it's starting now and it's only once a year. So I definitely recommend that you guys check that out and share it with those that you love. Someone here actually shared that they, uh, last year, did the Tapping World Summit and just dedicated an hour every day to listen to it and had like some real, real transformation. So I recommend that with family. And also, again, if you get it earlier, there's a lot of extra perks, especially with all those tapping meditations. So any other questions or comments? Jim? Um, you? Let's give a hand for Jessica Ordner, please. Uh. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,